Allegedly, it is called Project Starbeam. Perhaps they will change the name now that it's out in the public, we believe. Who knows? We'll see. But Disney, one thing that we think is actually happening is that Bob Iger is copying and pasting an idea that one Bob Chapik had and briefly, very briefly announced. Yes, it is in fact the Disney Prime idea. Bob Chapek perhaps dreamed up an application that would be one app for all of Disney. Disney Plus, Hulu, and so much more. And today, we're talking about potential leaks that uncover just what Disney might have planned to save the House of Mouse. Welcome back, folks. It's a sunny day because you're here so happy to join you in explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve, making sure that the mainstream media, the access types, that they do not set the narrative, but that, in fact, truth prevails. Well, folks, as we dive into this content today, remember that we are in rumor and speculation territory, and we would never want to mislead you that it's anything other than. Folks, we are talking about a very early leak, potentially, an alleged rumor out of the House of Mouse where perhaps Disney is following through on Bob Chapek's earlier plans to create a major, mega, magical application where everything is all under one very happy umbrella. It is an effort to raise revenues, not only at the parks, not only on streaming, but even in the merchandise arena that Disney is faltering on, apparently. Folks, we had a wonderful conversation about it. We would love for you to listen in and find out exactly what we believe is taking place under the leadership of one Bob Iger as he continues to take all the ideas that Chapek had and claim them for his own. All right, so uh, folks, we're going to talk about one that enters us into rumor and speculation territory. We're going to be very careful to proclaim that because we are talking about a future product which is not out, which may or may not be in development, and we are using a source who has brought us some stuff, and we've talked to another source who said, yeah, this is uh, probably what Disney is working on, and it heard some stuff about it. But um, And one of those sources is out in the chat right now in terms of the person who keyed me in that this may be taking place reached out to another person and got some confirmation on it. So we're talking about uh, Project Starbeam, which is what I am told is the name of this idea. And uh, we're going to give some context to this. So let's get started by going in the Wayback Machine for just a moment and take a look mm -hmm. at uh, what people have been saying before. And we just had not necessarily put the pieces together yet. So all the way back from uh, May 10th, Variety was reporting that Disney Plus is to add Hulu content in a one-app experience later in 2023, prices for Disney Plus to increase. Now, the prices for Disney Plus did increase. And yes, according to our sources, again, rumor and speculation here, folks, but we're going to be really specific here. Our understanding is that Disney does plan to integrate Hulu into Disney Plus in December. So we can't say how we know that, but that's what we are hearing, is that this will happen in mm. December. Uh, it says Disney is pulling Hulu tighter into the House of Mouse. Earnings call. Wednesday, uh, Iger said the company will soon launch a one-app experience. You get the idea. Now, we thought that that was just Disney Plus and Hulu, maybe ESPN. All right, let's go to uh, That Park Place. This by Stuttering Guitarist, uh, you're probably already streaming, goes on to talk about something that Culture Casino has been discussing. That is, people are moving to streaming more than ever. In fact, if you look at the streaming versus the linear side of things, linear linear TV is being beaten now for the very first time by streaming. Uh, one of the interesting things about that also is that YouTube is actually the leader in terms of uh, who is winning on streaming. And I have lost my other article that... Nope, I've got it right here. Let's go here <laughs> and see if it loads up like we need it. Okay, here's the, here's the one that I... This is a gem. And then we're going to get into what I've heard. But I, I'm Disney trying to build Plus the context Prime. around this. Gosh. <laughs> well, it's on oh, DisneyPlus.com. Yep. This is from November of last year. What would Disney Plus Prime look like? Jonas and I looked at this. We didn't know what to make of it. And, well, it's, it seems like this is coming to fruition. But Disney Plus has been ahead of the pack regarding its explosive growth since the service first launched uh, a trickling of countries in November 2019 in the U.S. Disney owned Hulu offers a series of add-on services, yada, yada, yada. Talks about ESPN and ESPN Plus. But here's what it really, where it gets interesting and where the folks behind this, this website may have known something. I'm starting to think they did. 
Marvel Unlimited would be beneficial to Marvel fans. Another service Disney offers is Marvel Unlimited, which would be a no-brainer in a Disney Prime, especially for Marvel fans. With Marvel being one of those core brands on Disney+, Plus, it would make sense to bundle Marvel comic subscription into a Disney Prime. Disney Prime could offer discounts at parks, cruises, and Disney stores. Isn't this getting interesting, Jonas, based on what I talked to you yes. earlier about today? Disney Prime could include a D23 membership. And it mm. goes on to talk about final thoughts. It says, with Disney's rumored Amazon Prime competitor, I thought I would take a look at some of the potential services and perks that this Disney Prime service could offer. Well, folks, here's, here's what we're uh, ready to say here on this channel. Again, we're talking about a future product. Again, we're talking about something that is not done, not released, and maybe years out. But according to the source that I've talked to, the the notion that Disney has on how it's going to radically increase its revenues and fix its problems in terms of lower merchandise sales, lower domestic park attendance, it all comes down to this Project Starbeam. That's the rumor. And what is Project Starbeam? It is a one-app solution for Disney. Now, an, an exception to this is I am told that ESPN would not be part of it. I don't know why. Uh, that does line up very well with the fact that ESPN is separated out now in Disney's uh, corporate infrastructure as one third mm -hmm. of the entire company, and it's not part of the other stuff. But what we're talking about here is Disney Plus, Hulu, the My Disney Parks experience. We're talking about Genie Plus. We're talking about the Disney Store, perhaps a brand new online Disney Store. We're talking about D23, all of that, everything like that under one umbrella. Now, why would Disney want to have a single app for all of this? Well, what we're told is that the integration of this could result in, for example, you watch Moana through Disney Plus on this app. Then you get advertise advertisements that you can click on and immediately go to a Disney store selling you Moana items. And then you get a recommendation of the types of attractions that are at Disney World or Disneyland based on where you live that have Moana in those attractions. Now, you can imagine you take that in any direction. Let's say you watch all kinds of Marvel. Suddenly you're buying Marvel stuff through Disney's online Amazon-esque store through this exact same app. It's, it is a plan, allegedly, to integrate the retail space, the streaming space, and the parks and experiences space all together to try to create a single cyclical system for all of it. I, I hand it over it. the panel now. Jonas, take it away. You hate it. You don't like it. Tell us why. If you think I'm ever, I mean, I barely want to hand my kids a phone that has Disney Plus activated on it. Uh, the idea that you could hand them Disney Plus and also they're directly going to try to sell them things using that interface. I, 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 I cannot fathom how angry parents would get if not only are they bringing them Baymax, but also they're wanting to bring in all the things that Baymax is selling in his latest series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, 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 this company is not a company that is trusted. And to do a single app experience, they, they have all this data anyways. I fully, I fully comprehend that they have mm -hmm. all this data anyways. Yeah. But this company is not trusted. And then to say that we are going to be the everything app and as, as much as they can integrate into this, that they're going to try to get at your information in so many ways. And also that they are a children's entertainment company means that they're going to try to collect your children's information in all of these ways. I just I, I do not like it as a parent in any now, way. In, in Disney's defense, which I am rarely on. When it comes to the child accounts, they do not advertise, as my understanding, to children on their accounts. So I don't know that they would do this for children accounts. I don't know. You know, of course, we're talking about something that's Disney may not even know the answers to these. But I also see, you know, we've talked before about why doesn't Disney put Hulu as their lead streaming platform and integrate Disney Plus into it? We've talked about these different things before. Hulu is much more lucrative. If this is where they're going, and if they were to keep Disney Plus as the name of it and just add all of these new features to Disney Plus, I can see why Disney Plus is the name they want to stick with. I also find it fascinating that Disney has recently come out and said uh, that Disney Plus is no longer a key component of their revenue in terms mm -hmm. of being a driver of revenue. We're going to talk about that in future videos. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, folks, but I do find it fascinating that all of this is happening and it sort of gives credence to this idea that Disney needs a different solution 
to generate revenue. They have went full on into streaming. Disney Plus is losing money. They are selling ABC. That is another loss in advertising. It is a tremendous loss in advertising. It's a tremendous mm-hmm. loss in political cachet once ABC News is gone. And so Disney needs to find a new way to make lots and lots and lots of money. Paul, how are they going to make some money? Does this does this make sense to you, or do you say, oh, it's a bunch of goobly gobbledygook? So, so to me, uh, as a tech guy, uh, the, it, it's really all about, oh, I'm all on my own. Uh, to, to me, it's all about whether people... <laughs> Big Paul, take over. It's your show now. Later. People we'll be back. recognize very quickly whether they want something or not. There's a very quick smell, a sniff test people have. So I'm going to go back in time when Apple with Motorola came out with their uh, Rocker, R-O-K-R phone mm. that that held 100 iTunes uh, uh, songs. Uh, very quickly, it was, it, you could just smell. It didn't matter how much uh, Steve Jobs... Uh, distortion field he he wrapped it in when he he presented it we all knew he was he hated presenting it as the greatest next biggest thing because it it wasn't up to his spec and the audience knew you just know when something's a stinker when the iphone came out steve Ballmer of microsoft said this is nonsense no one's going to buy this while the audience knew what they wanted the audience always knows what they want especially when it comes to tech and these micro managed uh, uh, channels are really a tech experience more almost more than a tele uh, an entertainment experience so uh it it's, feels kind of desperate it, it almost feels like disney has to imp- uh, fix the brand and then we might have some more trust with these extensions that they're creating. One of the things, again, going back to tech that they've lost, dropped the ball on is when we were in the CD-ROM development business and we we're doing a lot of kids, kids CDs, Disney had tons of kids CDs, okay? Tons. Uh, and in fact, one of their biggest sellers were was the uh, Buzz Lightyear Disney uh, game CDs. No one talks about this. Uh, and they've lost the ball on that. So. Again, it's about getting back to trust, getting back management who understands that there are multiple sources of revenue like gaming. How come see how come uh, you know there's nothing on any of the Sony PlayStation or Xboxes? No, no uh, uh, no games from Disney. This yeah, is no, just crazy. They, they went all in on mobile uh, somewhere around the time that they bought it around 2012, mm-hmm. uh, right around the time that they lost yeah. bought Lucas films and they they killed Lucas yeah, Arts completely. Uh, which is, you know, great way to read the room, guys. To say <laughs> Star Wars fans, Lucas film, Lucas Arts fans, those aren't the same thing. <laughs> to to look at like the, you know, in the '90s and such, Star Wars was carried in the zeitgeist by comic books, novels, and video right. games, like the three right. pillars. And if you're going, oh, we don't need the video, like screw the video games, you don't need that. Like that's but, like it's like Jonah said, you're not reading the room right. And at and, all. and and not and and the thing is not having the video games is to me is instructive of the fact that they just don't get the entire digital opportunity. They don't, oh, have, they, they don't have someone there who goes, Hey, <laughs> let's have fun with all of this stuff. Ooh. Cause we get all of this. What stuff. is that word? I don't know um, that word. Fun? Anyway, <laughs> well, that's, speaking of uh, that's reading the room. Uh, yes. KMG has been doing a fantastic job of mm-hmm. telling us some things that line up with this. KMG of course has some experience in this area. Don't want to say too much, but go ahead, Jonas. Right. Well, I, I wanted to make the read the room joke uh, because I'm reading the second thing that uh, KMG posted. In fact, they've already starting at, started adding Alexa type products in hotel rooms, specifically the Polynesian Resort. Yeah. yeah. They have a, hey, it oh, says, uh, "Hey Disney." Yeah. Uh, really. And, yes. R- really. And they have mouse. They're Alexas with mouse ears on them. They're bugs yeah, pretty that much. are dressed they're... up like Disney characters. It's so so Orwell yeah. right there. It, is the yeah. voice just like Alexa, or is it Mickey, or is it it's... anything fun? Uh, hey, <laughs> I don't put a little effort into it. <laughs> I think, I don't know I think it's the standard Alexa voice, but uh, the first thing I would do in one of those hotel rooms is unplug that thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, hey, totally hey, Blue, do you have any more money? This is a JPEG era initiative that was announced back in 20 to 21 for he wanted to create a product to rival Amazon Prime. Absolutely you know... correct. And oh, sorry, go ahead, Lorraine. 
No, I was going to add, Disney can't even get their My Disney Experience app to work. They <laughs> couldn't be even, even more reason they want to ditch it and throw it in here. Yes, they couldn't even implement Next Gen, a.k.a. you know, FastPass Plus. And as someone who works in IT, I'm not even going to tell you how much of a complete cluster that whole system is. You Disney IT is a joke. In IT circles, whenever we get a someone from Disney said, hey, we want to recruit you for Disney. Uh, no, you guys are a perfect <laughs> example of what not to freaking do. So they're, to say they're that so they're going to try to rival Amazon, no, with Amazon, my stuff actually works. It's actually <laughs> seamless well, and, and it works. It's funny that you say this, Lorena, because one of the things that we've heard about this uh, Project Starbeam is that allegedly Disney would try to eliminate some of their departments, which would become superfluous in this situation, i.e. they could get rid of the tech team behind Disney, my Disney experience, and they could go with, uh, you know, pull some of the best members from that team, pull them into doing this, pull some of the best people from the Disney Plus app programming side into this. And, uh, but I, I do find fascinating that this, if this is true, it's another example of Bob Iger coming in and continuing with a Bob Chapek mm. initiative, but not giving Chapek any credit for it. This seems to be continuing. And before I toss this to the panel, I do want to say, too, um, there's a source out there that has also told us that one of the big pushes for this, this is kind of a sidebar, but I, I don't want to forget it. I do want to say it on the, on the stream. One of the big pushes for this is also to move uh, a great number of processes into artificial intelligence and, and get rid of an, a large number of positions. This could be even down to, like, Disney ad sales, which could be uh, largely the agents who sell the ads could be eliminated. That could and be easily, yeah. Move this out. into AI where there's a portal where the ad buyers are buying this across all of the various domains, you know, across the Disney store, across Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN, gaming, uh, uh, you know, uh, what would you say, product tie ins, et cetera, through a single mm -hmm. portal. Anyway, though, I, I, I want to go back to the JPEG thing. Um, you got, oh, you sorry, guys Trump, find this. Add, yeah, go, go. One more thing. Uh, also the other thing to realize about Disney IT, uh, a lot of that stuff is offshore. Mm. Well, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the great thing is Chapek knew how to make money and, uh, and right now Bob yeah. Iger needs ways to make money. And so the ESPN, it looks like ESPN is, uh, going full steam ahead towards this idea that ESPN is a collective place for you to watch all sports. That's probably why they're partnering with Amazon right now. It's their intention. Who knows if it'll work? Uh, this uh, Disney Prime or whatever it ends up being called, Project Starbeam, which uh, that is an amazingly Disney sounding title, Project Starbeam, uh, but malevolent at the same time, which is another thing that is very Disney. <laughs> I was going to say, Joe, it feels a little sinister, right? Like Project Starbeam sounds a little sinister. <laughs> It's something they ran in, in the 60s with the CIA. They, they should have called it the Illudium P-238. <laughs> I, need to, get, I need to get rid of the planet Earth because it blocks my view of Venus. We apologize, <laughs> Margaret. We'll, we'll scoot. Hang on. The only man that both the uh, monster, the Monstars and the Lunatunes <laughs> would trust. <laughs> uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that there are a lot of things that Bob Chapek did that they are very glad to continue to use in a lot of money-making initiatives like Genie Plus. They're not going to get rid of that. The exorbitant price of the parks right now, that is Bob Chapek's doing. They're not going to get rid of that. So he was really bad, but I guess he actually did them a lot of favors that they're definitely not going to reverse on. They just want... Well, we have to say that uh, according to our sources, they the people inside Disney have realized they can't charge anymore for Disney World. They're, they're, they're at the top, so... Right. But but the, the, the point of that is that Bob Chapek found out, OK, just how much is the highest point at which you can charge people mm. to go to Disney? And and that's where we are right now. Well, that's right. We've mean, been there. The threshold. Yeah. All right, folks, we hope you enjoyed that conversation. If it was enlightening to you and explaining to you where Disney might be going, consider click the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you do stick it to the algorithm. So go ahead and have some fun clicking that thing. Only once though, only once. You don't want to unclick it. Folks, drop a comment down below. We would love to have you be a part of the conversation. We care about your thoughts. We covet those comments. So drop one down below. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning folks. Keep growing. 
and you know it. Keep having fun.